so thankful for this family coming to visit us, and we thank, thank you, you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Amen. Okay, you Praise can be the Lord. And she's waiting for you, and we'll see you later. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Fine young men. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So glad you're here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, what a day it has been, huh? Yeah. Uh, this place is paid off now. Yes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I mean, it feels so good. $85,000. Is, is what it cost us to refurbish this. And uh, it was, uh, took us about a year and a half to get it paid, huh? It was supposed to cost 45000 They got done with it, it was 85000 Well, we only had the, you know, about 43000 I think, at the time that the work was done. And so we've been working on getting it paid off ever since. And so now we're free of that. Praise the Lord. And uh, now we're going to have a camera to live stream, uh, which is really going to help a lot. We, we have people in Africa and in, the, in Asia that watch us and learn from us and that kind of thing. So that's kind of exciting. They'll be able to see us live now. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'll have to watch what I say, won't I? I won't be able to edit it out. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I want to talk to you tonight about walking in newness of life. Walking in newness of life. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 4. There are way too many Christians, I'll say Christians, people who have accepted Jesus at one time or another into their heart and their life that are born again. And uh, they just, somehow it doesn't go click. I don't know why, it just doesn't go click. But, uh, so, so they wind up not walking in newness of life. And if, if, if a person gets stuck trying to be good enough to work their way to heaven, to, in other words, to live a Christian life, what you might say uh, carnally or naturally, you know, do all the right things, say all the right things. I mean, we can learn church. We can be streetwise, we can be churchwise. We can, we can learn how to do all that stuff. But there's no peace in it. There's no joy in it. There's no life in it. And so what we really need to do is, number one, of course, not just you know, give a, uh, you know, an emotional uh, uh, acceptance of Jesus, not just a mental acceptance of Jesus, but actually repent, which washes away all of our separation from God and everything that took place then, and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. In other words, become born again and have a re then begin a relationship with him. Because without a relationship with Jesus, you, all you're going to have is religion. And religion will kill you. It will. It'll, it'll make you miserable because it, we can't live up to uh, uh, the law in the sense of, of man-made rules, regulations, and all these kinds of things. But what, what the beauty of it is that when Jesus comes into our heart and life, we're transformed on the inside and he brings us in to a whole new way of living. And uh, that's kind of what I want to talk about tonight. There, in Romans 6, 4, it says, Therefore we're buried with him by baptism into death. That's what our baptism is talking about, where uh, a person is actually immersed in the water, right? And then uh, comes up out of the water. It's a outwards picture or sign of what has actually transpired on the inside. When we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, we die to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a good thing. We die to ourselves, and we are made to be brand new. Scripture says, old things have passed away, all things have become new. We're a new creation in Christ that new creation will begin to live differently. 
there's just there's a change on the inside. I remember both Pastor Sharon and I were 32 years old before we ever, uh, you know, even knew there was a Savior. For that matter, we we'd, we'd seen religion, but you know, we were just all messed up anyway. And we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, became born again, and we were alcoholics at the time, uh, just all kinds of messed up. Probably, well, most likely we'd have been divorced by now if uh, we hadn't got born again. But thank God we both got born again. And it, something on the inside just totally changed, that new creation. The, the, the spirit man... God totally recreates. He creates brand new spirit. And so that's who we are. So we're buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So there's, there's not just a water baptism, which is a picture of this baptism into the body of Christ where we become uh, spiritual children of God, which is phenomenal. And we should walk in this newness of life. Now, God has commended his love toward us. We were totally unworthy, totally lost, totally separated from God, and yet while we were yet still sinners, still at enmity, in other words, we still kind of hated God and the things that, that, that uh, have to do with God, he loved us. He commended his love toward us. In Romans 5, 5, it says, and hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that's given to us. He's really given us everything. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, you're probably familiar with that. He so loved the world, loved you, loved me, that he gave his only begotten son so that we would not perish but have everlasting life. See, this is the good news of the gospel. There's no way for us to get good enough. We need a Savior. And uh, God knew that and took care of that. Pastor Sharon's message this morning on the blood was, just talked so much about what God did and what, in, in Christ and how Jesus shed his blood to make us the righteousness of God. That's phenomenal. He, he's done everything that needs to be done, really. All we need to do is yield to him and, and obey him. Of course, if we love him, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And it's not a, a, a big set of rules. It's just simply, I'm in love with you. I want, to, I want to do, I want to please you. I want to do what you want me to do because I know you love me so much that what you ask me to do is best for me, too. See, if you really love somebody, somebody you know somebody loves you. If you really know they love you, then you can trust them because you know they're only going to do you good. And that's the way God is. He's only going to do us good. So we can trust him. And he sent Jesus to do us good and uh, to, to, to give us this newness of life. God loved us before we were born again. We were reconciled while we were enemies. Romans chapter 5, verse 10 through 11. For if when we were enemies, the Bible says, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, being reconciled, we should be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, be, by whom we now have received the atonement. Atonement's an interesting word. You can even break it down. Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of a word play. But you're at one meant with God. Atonement. It makes you at one with God. Praise the Lord. To be at one with the creator of the universe. To be at one with uh, uh, God Almighty. To be in such a relationship with him that he calls you his child and you can call him father. You know, we're all familiar with the Lord's Prayer, our Father. Well, there's a whole lot of people praying that prayer that don't have a clue really, what they're doing. They don't know him, and he is not their father. And that, that's tragic, but that's religion. But once, you, once you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you, the Holy Spirit begin, begins to teach you in the Word of God, the Bible, 
uh, uh, about your relationship, who God is, uh, who Jesus uh, is, all that kind, then, then what happens is that you, you begin to develop this relationship that is just so, so awesome, and you really find yourself at one with God, which means you're going to be at peace, you're going to be confident, you know, you're not going to be uh, 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 fearful, right? You're not. You're, none of that's going to be a part of your life anymore. You're going to. You're going to be at one with your Creator. See, sin entered the world by Adam, but righteousness entered the world by Jesus. The Bible calls Adam the first Adam in the Garden of Eden, the one who fell. First Adam called Jesus the second Adam the one who lived his life sinless and then gave his life so that we might be saved. Hallelujah. Romans 5.12, where for as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. The all have sinned. It's, it's not like we can go around pointing fingers at people and saying this one's better than that one. or it. Everybody sinned. Because our DNA goes back to Adam. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, what's, the, what's the, one of the first words out of a baby's mouth? That once they can speak, it's no. <laughs> but even before that, they proved they're, they're really quite selfish. You know, because every sound means clean me, feed me, hug me. Something is me. It's all me, 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 me. In other words, that's really what it is. And uh, we kind of have to try and help them get over that. But Jesus does. I said, Jesus does. You know, I was an only child. I did not share <laughs> with anybody. <laughs> and then, I, you know, of course, when I got married, I had to learn to share, but I didn't like it. Right? And then Jesus came along, and I actually began to enjoy it. It's a, that's a whole different thing. You, you, your whole, the way you are changes. You just look at things differently. And uh, Romans 5, 17 through 18, for if by one man's offense, which was Adam, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men to the justification of life. Praise the Lord. Before a person accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they're condemned already, it says in the book of Mark. See? If they reject him, they remain condemned. It's just that simple. But once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there, there is therefore now no, no condemnation at all. It's all wiped away. It's under the blood, as Pastor Sharon talked about. So this same kind of love is in us now. God so loved us when we were yet sinners, when we were his enemies, when we had no regard for him. And, but now he pours his love into us. He sheds his love abroad in our hearts. And uh, so that love, that same God love, God kind of love, agapao or agape love the, is, is, the, uh, you know, is, is the Greek of it. And it, it's... It's in us. That love is in us because he is in us. And that's a huge thing. See, he, he came and dwelt in us when we became born again. We're spirit beings, Thessalonians tells us. We have a spirit, right? That's who we are. We're, we're a spirit. We were created after the image and likeness of God. John 4, 24 says God is a spirit. They that... Uh, worship him, must worship him in spirit and truth, but God is a spirit. We were created after the image and likeness of God, so we are spirit beings, all right? We have a soul. That's our, this is the seat of our will. That's our intellect. That's our emotions, and that's inseparable. That's who we are, spirit beings with a soul. Then we live in a body, which, thank God, I'm going to get a new one. Hallelujah, because that's the promise. Once we die, you know, what we call death, 
is actually just a transition for the believer. And we, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. But then the promise is that he will give us a new body like unto his, uh, uh, which is a, quite a thing because it's, it's after the original design, which is eternal. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? We're going to live eternally, amen, with a new body. And uh, it's just, it, it's really awesome. Awesome. But that love is in us. That same love. John 17, 26. I've declared unto them thy name and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I in them. This is Jesus talking to the Father. And he's saying this same, this, I'm, gonna, I'm going to declare your name, Father, to them and I'm going to, the love that you love me with, the same love that you love me with is what he's saying, that I want that love to be in them. And uh, I, I want, I, I, I want, uh, I, I want to be in them. And I want the love that you love me with to be in them. I want them to experience the relationship that we have. You can read the whole 17th chapter of the book of John, and it's Jesus praying for us, mostly. It's just for us. And how much he wants us to be one with him and one with the Father. And this is actually what takes place when we truly become born again. See, because that spirit being is totally created new, and the Holy Spirit then comes and intermingles with our spirit, and we become one with God. Of course, that has to work out. Uh, we've got this computer that needs to get rebooted <laughs> and straightened out, but we're different on the inside, and so our, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We're transformed from the inside out, which is a tremendous thing. And righteousness contains this kind of love. And we are, because of Jesus, the righteousness of God in Christ. Praise the Lord. See? Romans 1.17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans 3.21, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Verse 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Praise the Lord. It's interesting, too, that over and over again, the scripture tells us it's not a matter of you and I having faith in Jesus. It's a matter of us having the faith of Jesus. That's an interesting concept. It really is. Because it's not, a, it's not a faith we muster. Everything about God, everything about Jesus is supernatural. See? Faith, the Bible says, comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So we're receiving, when we hear the word of God preached or spoken, read, faith comes. It's supernatural faith. It's the faith of God, if you will. It's the faith of Jesus. And that then becomes what stirs in us. And we only have one thing to do, accept it or reject it. We accept, we receive, or we just push away. But as we receive it, we receive the faith, the faith of Jesus. So do we have enough faith? Yes. He says, I've given you the measure of faith. Well, what measure? The same measure that Jesus had. Wow. All we need to do is use it, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we have it. it. It's tremendous. The faith, it's by the faith of Jesus Christ unto all them that believe. There's no difference. So, you know, one person is not better than another person. One person does not have more faith than another person. It's just a matter of, are we going to use what we have? He's given it to us. It's his. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. So, there, you know, and there are those, they, they really don't understand the love walk, and so it's totally foreign to them. Romans 10.3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And, and this is that idea that, that so many religions, denominations, groups, they, everything is based upon works. And, and yet, it's true that faith without works is dead. In other words, if you have faith, there's going to be a corresponding action. But you're never going to prove your faith by your works. You know, that's a, it's an attitudinal thing. It's, I'm going to show you how much faith I've got, so I'm just going to do this and do that, and, you know, that doesn't work. See? Because the Bible says that our works or our actions are as filthy rags, that they're useless. See? But, but what Jesus has done is the only thing acceptable. And by our, by our receiving what he's done, accepting him and his lordship, not just his saviorship, but his lordship, then what happens is we just, we're, I mean, we're walking in grace. We're walking in the love of God. We're, 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 we're in a whole different realm now to where we're not trying to please God. We just do. I mean, you love your children, you know. You, they may not be perfect, but you love them. You want the best for them. You try, you, you're always trying to, to encourage them to do the right things and what have you. But even when they don't, you love them. Isn't that true? And, and you want the best for them. All of that comes really from the heart of God. Is he wants the best for us. He's, the, he's given us a free will. We can do what we want to do. We can choose to obey him, not obey him. We can choose to follow him, not follow him. We can choose to receive Jesus, not receive Jesus. He didn't want robots. He, he wanted people who by their own free will would accept his love and be filled with his love and love him back by choice. Praise God. And, and so if, if, if people say, well, you know, God, if you read the Old Testament, he's just so angry, he's mad all the time, it's just all wrath. And No, actually, all the way through the Old Testament, God is showing himself merciful and kind. I mean, yes, he judges sin. There's no mediator. There's nothing to stop it. He has to. He's a holy God. But all the time, he's coming to his people and he's offering them his mercy, his grace, and his love. So it really hasn't changed. Jesus just, you know, came and, and uh, 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 established this, this age of grace, which is so beautiful. But all he did is what he saw the Father do. All he said is what he heard the Father say so that people could actually uh, relate to the unseen God. And, uh, you know, that people will talk about the love walk, but to them it means to do what they want without restraint, without being chastised, with not understanding that the Lord chastises those he loves. He doesn't punish, you know, that way, but he'll correct you. Uh, you know, if your kid likes to run out in the street and play, and uh, you'll usually you will tell them stay out of the street, which does no good at all because the only thing they hear is street. That's the last word you said was street, and that's where they go. But you, you, if you try to you try to teach them that there's a safe place, play in the yard, play stay stay in the backyard, whatever, stay in the yard. And that's all God is doing. He's saying, here's where it's safe for you. That's what this book will tell you, is where it's safe, where it's designed for you to flourish, to prosper, to, to walk in the love of God and be safe, be secure, be at peace, be filled with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So to walk in love is to walk really in the highest spiritual realm that there is. Because the Bible says God is love. God is love. That's who he is. Hallelujah. He's also just, but he is love. 
Amen. And so we, we learn to walk in love. Well, that means I've got to forgive people that are not too nice to me, right? That hurt me, whatever. What, but I, so I learned to forgive. He says, forgive and you'll be forgiven. You know, that was one of the scary things when I first noticed that in the Lord's Prayer, the you know, Lord's Prayer, uh, you know, forgive me, right? For, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others. Well, what do you mean as we forgive others? What if we don't forgive others? Well, we got a serious problem here. <laughs> so anyway, so, but that's a part of the love walk. You love, and so then you're, you're more forgiving. You're more considerate, all of those kinds of things. And it, what you find is then it sets an environment around you that makes living really enjoyable. You're not at war with everybody. You're not at war with yourself. That's a tremendous thing. And the love walk is a place where there is no fear. I said there is no fear. Perfect love, the Bible says, casts out, does away with all fear. So, you know, it's kind of a thermometer. You can, if you've got fear in your life, you know that that's an area of your life that you really haven't experienced the love of God in. You know, and so then you, you can talk to him about that. You can get into the word of God and uh, find scriptures that will help you. See, uh, we're, we're, I mean, we're, we're told that uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So fear technically is driven by a spirit. So God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, well-disciplined mind. So then we can, we can tell kind of where we're at with God on the love quotient by whether we still fear, fear people, feel, fear heights, whatever. And, uh, but God will work with that, see? Because he loves you, then he's going to come. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit, the comforter the standby, the strengthener, the helper, to, to guide us and to help us work through things to, to where we can just actually roll all our care over on God, the Bible says, because he cares for us. Hallelujah. It's a love walk where there's no fear. First John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. And of course, that's Jesus, perfect love. Casts out all fear, because fear has torment. Well, we know that. And he that fears is not made perfect in love. So we're being perfected. And we can, we can see whether we're perfect in love or not in every area of our life by how we react and how we feel in, in those situations. There's also a, a constant peace. See, God is a, he, he, well, it, Philippians 4, 7, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, the peace of God. Well, you, in our world today, there is so much turmoil, isn't there? It's a mess. You, you, you read too much news, and you're going to, a spirit of fear is going to come in. It really, it's just, you kind of have to measure that. But uh, <laughs> there's a peace, though, that under that, that's just deeper than the circumstances, the situations, what's going on. There's a peace knowing God loves me. God is on my side. You know, I'm okay with God. And he's in control. In spite of what things look like. So it's not a peace that's based upon how I feel or what I see, but it's a peace based on the relationship that I have with him. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It passes all understanding. And you, you'll, you'll find people asking you, how, how do you, how, I, I don't know how you can always be so happy. Well, it's easy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The, the things that are going on may not make me real happy, but I'm sure happy in Jesus. I'm content with him. I'm okay with him. God's on my side. If God be for me, who can be against me? The Bible says, right? Praise the Lord. So there, there's a, this peace that passes all understanding. It keeps our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. 
And so there, there, this newness of life is a, it's not something that you and I can do on our own. But it's a life that we can live in, in harmony, in unity, in cooperation with God through Christ by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Short one tonight. Glory to God. Did that help anybody? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If, if you are here and you've never actually received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've been churched, you've been, you know, you know who Jesus is, you know who God is, but you've never actually asked him to come and be your Lord, be your Savior, then uh, I would just invite you to come. Let, let's say a prayer together, and I'll introduce you to him. It's very simple. Uh, just, just apologizing, with, you know, really for trying to live life without God, uh, doing your own thing, that kind of thing. And so that's repentance. In other words, I'm, I'm done with the old life. I'm willing to let all the past go. And God will, he will, the blood of Jesus will just totally cleanse from all unrighteousness. It's like you never sinned. And just ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. And he'll come into you and you'll become a new creation. And you'll know it. Your inside will just be different. And uh, it's a great, you know, it's a great uh, life. To just know that you belong to God. He's in you. He's with you. He's for you. And you begin to enjoy newness of life that you never thought possible. If that's you, just come now. We'll pray. And if everybody's okay, then we'll just let you all go. Hi, I'm Pastor George Stover. And uh, I want to invite you to come. And join with us as we build the kingdom of God at Wellspring Church of All Nations. We're located at 8140 West Lone Mountain Road. There's also an entrance off of 4870 Janelle Drive. There is nothing more important to you and I today than the Word of God. If we, if we don't learn as a people, as a nation, to return to the Bible, to return to faith in Jesus Christ and Him and Him alone... We're, we're not going to have the country that we've had, the one that I grew up in. I want my grandchildren and uh, my children, your children and your grandchildren to live in the America I grew up in. But, you know, it's going to depend on us, the people of faith. We have to get into the Word and, and just stick with it. And uh, having done all, stand. And so we're really, really uh, in wanting you to come and just be a part of who we are, what we're doing here, because it's really all about you.